Welcome to this demonstration entitled Conjugate Heat Transfer in a Two-Fin Heat Exchanger Using ANSYS Mechanical. So this models water flowing down the tube and air flowing on the outside of the tube, across the tube, and across the fins. So the water side boundary conditions are a film coefficient of 200 watts per meter squared Kelvin at a free stream temperature of 60 degrees C. And the air side boundary conditions are a film coefficient of 30 watts per meter squared Kelvin and a free stream temperature of 20 degrees C. We're going to investigate the heat transfer characteristics of the two-fin heat exchanger when you're using steel and copper as the materials. Okay, so here we are in the workbench interface. The first thing we're going to do is open a steady-state thermal analysis system by clicking and dragging like this. Now we're going to open the engineering data section. And here you see that structural steel is the default material. So what we're going to do is add copper. And it's here under general materials. So we scroll up here. Right mouse click on copper. And add to A2 as engineering data. Okay, great. Now we close here. Now we go to geometry. Right mouse click. Do new design model or geometry. And here you have design modeler, so we're going to import an, is an external geometry file. And it's this fintube WSO 3.3.step. And now we click generate. And there is your tube fin heat exchanger. As you can see, to say bandwidth, it's got double bilateral symmetry. So now the next thing we do is we mesh the model in workbench. So go back to workbench. Double click here on model. And that opens ANSYS Mechanical. So let's here, let's go to mesh here, to sizing, let's do medium instead of coarse. And then right mouse click on mesh and do generate mesh. And there is our mesh. Now if we expand the geometry and click on fin tube you can see here that the material assignment is structural steel and if we wanted to change to copper this is where we would do it but for our first run we'll keep uh, structural steel as the material so now let's start applying boundary conditions so let's select this top surface this bottom surface by hitting control and we rotate a little and this surface in this surface and then we will insert perfectly insulated as the boundary condition now this is our um, water side tube surface so let's highlight that and insert a convection boundary condition for that one the film coefficient we said was going to be 200 with an ambient temperature of 60 And now let's add the convection boundary condition for the air side. So let's select those surfaces. Okay, so it's basically, we'll do that for the, the entire tube. The front of the fins. The top of the fins. Sorry, I missed some of those. And now the bottom of the fins. Okay, so let's make sure that the correct errors are highlighted. This one we don't want to highlight because it's already idiomatic. So now let's right mouse click and insert convection. And there the film coefficient was 30 and the ambient temperature was 20. Okay, so now our model is defined and it's ready to run. So let's hit solve. And you can see it'll solve very, very quickly. Okay, now we right mouse click on solution and insert thermal and temperature. So this, and then uh, click on solve. 
right mouse click on solve, evaluate all results, and highlight temperature, and there is the temperature field obtained in the analysis. So now you can see that the minimum temperature is 33.993 degrees C and the maximum temperature is 40.477 degrees C. Okay, now what I would like to do is change the material and rerun. So here I highlight fin tube. Here under material assignment, I select copper alloy. And now I go to steady state thermal and I hit solve. Now it's solving for copper as the material. So now we click on temperature, and you can see that the minimum temperature is 37.132 degrees C, and the maximum temperature is 38.278. So you can see that because of the higher conductivity of the copper, the fin temperature is higher for the copper case than it is for the structural steel case, and the maximum temperature found inside the tube is lower for the copper case than it is for the structural steel case. Thank you so much for watching.